Hello, hello, and welcome back to Liar. We are still here with uh, Kadaj. I think that's, I think that was his name. Yeah. I, I don't exactly remember what the conversation was, but we'll, well, I'll find out. No worries. His taloned feet clack against the floor as he walks away. It's nice seeing you, Richter. Take care. After he's gone, Kadaj nods his head to, to the right. Oh, excuse me. Walk with me. I'm sure. His tail swishes back and forth as we, we mosey. Oh my god, let's mosey everyone! Uh, down the corridor. How has your time here been? Very good for the most part. It's been very, it's been very accommodating, and I've even made some friends uh, with the uh, made friends with the captain of the guard. Yes, Lyle Reed, the brave shining knight. I have a feeling he doesn't like me much. Oh, he has difficulty opening up to people. That's not true, but I'd rather not tell Kadaj that a Lyle doesn't trust him. I find that hard to believe. You've only been here for a few weeks, and he's become one of your dearest friends. Yes, I suppose he has. That reminds me. Are you planning on attending the ball? I was planning on going, yes. I've put so much work into setting it up that it would be a shame not to go. Planning on bringing someone. There are plenty of pretty ladies in the court that you could ask. Or gentlemen, if you prefer that. I blush at the thought of going to the party with Lyle by my side. Yes, I suppose there are. It's okay, though. I still don't know who I will go with. I'm, l I'm most likely end up deciding on the night it happens. He lets out a small chuckle and then uh, stops walking to look out the window. Why were you sent here? No, oh, spooky music. What? Sorry. If this seems out of nowhere. What does Aaron want from this exchange? What does he mean? I was sent here for some reason that he... Wait, for the same reason he was. Lyle was in need of advisors for the king. Not Lyle. <laughs> Liar. Yeah, you know. It was a simple trade deal. I was sent here to help the king of Liar with maintaining order for a hefty price. After a... After, after I finish answering, he takes a moment to respond as he stares out one of the windows. As I thought. I am here as a diplomat too, but that was not the only task I was given. What was your other task? He pauses and looks at me with a very sincere look on his eyes. In his eyes. The Kingdom of Dries is worried. They fear that Liar is falling out of touch with the rest of the kingdoms. Our corporations gone, yeah, cooperations, that's what that says, uh, goes on ever so smoothly, but our lands and connections are as separated as ever. He runs his paw on the windowsill, uh, touching one of the flowers with one of his claws. I was sent here as a diplomat, but my main objective will stay the same. I have been instructed to keep an eye on this kingdom and reconnect it with the others. I understand what he is saying. You were sent here as a spy. He looks back at me with a confused glance, which uh, which then um, breaks into a warm expression. Do you think I am? Well, it's just... Whether I am or not does not matter. A word of advice, Richter. Trust your own judgment and rely on what you know. That's the only way you can get by in this line of work. What you know can oh, can help you in the end. He puts his paws back uh, behind his back and continues walking. It's okay to trust people, but never as much as you trust yourself. Now, I have one more question for you. What is it? Where do your alliances lie? Allegiances. Is this a trick question? Is he testing me? Whatever he's doing, I don't like it. The answer is obvious. Wait, the obvious answer would be liar. But something tells me that's not correct. I am loyal to the crown, but most of all, 
I am loyal to Tigran. I can't get an exact read on his exp expression, but he seems pleased with my answer. You're smarter than most. Loyalty to Tigran is important, but you must not forget your dedication to those who matter. Why are you asking me these questions? I wanted to make sure I could trust you. Now, but I'll tell you this, I am no spy. I am simply making sure that our kingdoms can work in tandem. Dries wants cooperation with Lyre, but we cannot do that without connections and, re and relations. Hmm. Sorry, the game audio looks a bit... Eh, okay. We're just adjusting some things. Yes. Okay. Okay. He stops uh, walking and looks out the window to see the sun move closer and closer to where the mountains touch the sky. I fear that after this ball, things will be turning in, in, uh, in an undesirable direction. What do you mean by that? There's a long silence before he breaks. Before, yeah, before he speaks. Nothing. We shall cross that bridge once we get there. There's a lot to say. Uh, lot. There's a lot of work in store for us. He turns on his heel and uh, slowly walks away. Oh, one more thing. What is it? You don't have to worry about the king finding out about this conversation. I won't say a word, and I'm sure you won't either, correct? I don't see a reason for why I should say anything. Lord Kadaj hasn't done anything wrong, necessarily. I would even say he's doing this a job better than... Wait. Yeah, doing his job better because of it. I agree that our kingdoms need to be more tightly connected if we want to ensure stability. I have no reason to say anything. He smirks back at me. That's good to hear. Because if you did, it would be unpleasant for us both. And it would, mo it would certainly uh, make our job a lot harder. He says this with no malice in his voice. I think he means well. Oh, and if you were if you were looking for the king, I saw him in the gardens. You'll want to find him, and yeah, you'll want to find him now though. The sun will be setting soon. Uh, thanks. Have a pleasant afternoon, Richter. Same to you. My mind wanders back to that question. Where do your allegiances lie? Uh, I'm not sure if I answered that question truthfully. My allegiance lies with whomever I'm currently serving. They'll be the death of you. Like Ataj said, I'll get to that bridge when I cross it. I just need to get through the rest of the week. I stroll through the courtyards and out yeah, outdoor halls and make my way to the gardens. There's nobody here for what I can see, and the dying light of the sun casts a yellow hue over the grass. The pond is shimmering gold, and the leaves look like flakes of brass. I, uh, yeah, I take a seat on the tree trunk. Yeah, trump? Stump. I don't, ooh. Uh, that Lyle sat on and stare, <laughs> stare into that water of the pond. Uh, my reflection is almost as clear as if I uh, were staring into a mirror. A leaf falls onto the surface of the pond and creates a ripple that distorts my image. Fuck. What was that? I just felt a, sur a searing pain surge through my head for a split second. I bend over, lowering my head closer to the pond, and trying to gather my senses. It's then that I have this weird feeling rushing over me. My eyes drift onto the path. There's an area that I haven't been to yet. It's enclosed by some waters, warm wa walls, and towers. It looks like it leads to a thick patch of brush. The chilly air brushes up against my body. I really should have brought a cloak or something. Standing up, I walk around the edge of the pond and <clears throat> and I trail my hand along the uh, the side of the apricots. Leading in the archway, I think he I think to myself oh, why I'm even going back here. It feels like I'm being forced. I try not to think about it and just blame it on curiosity. It what it, it is then that I realize I can hear to hear talking. Muffled, uh, muffled and dis distant, but it's definitely a voice. Pain? Years? I can't really make out any a, a complete sentence. 
The hedges twist and turn as I and I find myself walking down a path that feels more like a maze. After a minute of walking, the hedges start to fade out, and I can see the rolling hills and mountains on the distance. Then, I come upon next is a bit strange. A startling, sorry. A Reiner is kneeling down in the grass, looking away from my di general direction. He's in front of a tombstone with a dragon apricot sitting on its base. Lena. Every day, I think about you. Things are go never going to go back to the way they were. Oh my god. I need to leave now. I don't think I'm welcome here. I go to walk down the walk back down the path, but as I turn, I scuff my shoe on the path. Richter. He says this without turning his head to look at me. His eyes are still lingering on the grave, shuddered by the uh, by the light on the sunset. Y yes, your majesty. How did you know it was me? He looks down on his knee and and then answers, "You're the only one he here that wears shoes, Richter." Oh, yes. That would probably give it away. I'm sorry that you caught me here, in this moment. That's okay, I should probably be leaving. No, please stay. He's speaking in a very sad voice, filled with agony. Do you know what happened? I, um... I just know that she died several years ago. Do you... do you want to know? Finding a way to respond to this is quite difficult. My social skills were never exemplary to begin with, but the situation is a bit too extreme. Still, I am curious. I feel like it would clear up some things. If you wish to tell me of your woes, I will listen. I can't even tell if he's breathing or not. The only thing that moves is his robe as it blows in the wind. Spoken like a man who cho chooses his words wisely. I've never opened up to anyone about this. He continues to sit there silently, barely moving. We were on our way back from visiting Dry's ten years ago. Little Adrius was just eight years old. I was told that this that this child was like eighteen. I thought he was twelve. <laughs> How is he eighteen? <laughs> I don't understand. He looks like baby. <laughs> Uh, looking, af uh, looking after the uh, castle from us. Uh, for us. Of course, he had help with Sir Runer. The trip went well, and we had many successful dis uh, discussions with the lords and ladies of Dries. Our, our time with King Aaron uh, went well, too. He was a good friend of mine. Traveling back home was when it happened. Our entourage consisted of several guards and a few dozen soldiers. All, all of them were trained very well, and the guards were as honorable as they came. But honor only gets you so far <clears throat> in the field of battle. At twilight, we were traversing through the canyon pass when we were attacked. You've heard of the bandit problem, yes? Of course. It was much worse back then. An entire legion of... Um... Uh, brigan brigands? A train to kill. Our carts were sitting ducks. They came sliding down the, sli the sides of the canyon. They knew the terrain better than anyone. My soldiers were not harm... Were not farm boys who... Wait, my soldiers were not farm boys who had never swung a sword. However, they fought them off well. Well enough for us to get a chance to escape and ride ahead. Everything happens so fast, yet I can still remember it so vividly. The way Lena was gripping my waist with her small but strong hands. The carriage careening down the path, hitting every bump in the road. The driver slumped over in the seat after getting an arrow through his chest. He inhales and exhales deeply through his nose and hunches over slightly. By the time the battle was over and my soldiers had caught up to the cart, it was too late. She died in my arms with a dagger in her stomach. His voice is shaking. They killed her. She... she was a... she was good and she was kind. 
It should have been. Tears are streaming down his face. His words are sticking in his throat. He gathers himself and continues. When we had arrived back in the castle and Adris found out. He locked himself in his room for weeks. I had... I would sit on the ground outside of his bedroom door and try to talk to him. The amount of grief her murder caused me was unbearable, but I can't imagine how he felt. I can see him take his cloak and wrap it around himself more tightly. And now those outlaws have made a resurgence. And I'm powerless. He finishes his story and sits there, staring at the sunset. This is a lot to take in. I don't really know how to respond. I don't get a chance, however. He stands up and slowly uh, clears his throat and walks back down the path. I follow behind him, not wanting to be left there with all that information. Richter. Yes, Reynar? I need you to be there for him. Once he becomes king, I need you to guide my son down the right path. A king without his advisor is like a brain with no con conscience. He rubs his head together. His hands. His heads together. That would be funny. But no, that says hands. His hands. Yes. Can I trust you? Can I be trusted? Can I be there for him? At first the thought irks me, but then I remember what Kadaj told me about uh, stability earlier. This might be my chance. I can try. That is all I ask. I want him to be a king better than I was. I truly did let him down. Your Highness, don't say that. It's true. One day I will explain why. He looks around and blinks his eyes a few times. I apologize for robbing you of a perfectly fine evening. It's quite alright. It was my fault for wandering back there. I find myself choosing my words wisely, like a walking on eggshells. Yes, I suppose so. However, it was a simple mistake, and I don't fault you for it. He swiftly nods his head while whipping his eyes with his... Wiping? Wiping his hand... His eyes with his hands. I'll be going now. Please, take care. Reynar? Yes, Richter. It's not your fault. He closes his eyes in contemplation, then responds, I wish it weren't. And with that, he leaves. I stand in the garden for a little while longer, watching the sun dissipate behind the mountains. The cold starts to get to me, so I head inside. Oh, I have to click. Okay. I've been sitting at my desk for the past hour thinking about the evening, the events of this afternoon, and to think, uh, this day started off so well. Now my mind can't stop racing. Actually, it feels completely blank. Like, there's so much to think about, and uh, so my mind tries to think about all of it at once and just shuts down. I really have been uh, given a great task. And it will most likely force me to for, uh, to give up uh, the things I wanted most. Suddenly the door swings open, almost blowing out the candles on my desk. Ah, oh, hello, friend. Uh, Lyle is slumped in the doorway and has a gaze looking, yeah, and has a dazed look on his face. Hey, Richter. Oh, he's drunk. Oh no, extremely drunk. Where have you been? Well, I was doing some business in my quarters, and then I went to the mess hall for supper. Me and my fellow guardsmen were playing drinking games, and I... He flops into the chair I was just sitting in. I won! His clothes are all uh, tussled and his uh, fur is a mess. I find myself uh, speak uh, speaking to him like one would a child. That's great, Lyle. How much did you drink exactly? He takes a moment to think about his answer. How many mugs is too many? About four. I probably drank about that much. 
Hmm. That's really not good for you. I've lost my patience for uh, everyone at this point, so all I can do is just rub my hands together awkwardly. The dresser with the rags and clean um and clean water catch my attention, so I move over there and get a damp rag from uh for him. You're really handsome. Y- you know that. What? What? Thanks. My face is more red than ever before right now. I wring out the rag into the bowl and bring it over to Lyle. His head is now lolling to the side slightly, and he can barely keep his eyes open. Humans are so pretty. And difficult. Lyle. He passed out. I drop the rag uh, back on the dresser and grab a blanket. I can't really be mad at him. He's such a great guy. What did he mean by that last part, though? Difficult. Uh, Lazily, I toss the blanket on him and blow out the candle. I kick my shoes off my feet and fall into bed. I feel completely exhausted. Okay, chapter five! Okay, okay. That's fun. I don't like dealing with drunk people. I don't know about you all. I find that it's a hassle. Uh, But I will be ending the part here, so I'll see you around, everyone.